Today we are looking at a case from the 21st century. So sit back as we go to Honduras. Maria José Alvarado Muñoz was born on the 29th of July 1995 in the small town of Santa Barbara in northwest Honduras. She was the youngest of three daughters, born to Teresa Muñoz and Virgilio Alvarado. Her parents were not rich, but they worked hard to try and give their three daughters the best opportunities possible. Throughout Maria José's childhood, Honduras suffered with high inflation and high unemployment. The lack of natural resources made it difficult for the economy to grow, and the main industry was agriculture, with the main crops being bananas and coffee. Over 50% of the population lived in very poor conditions. The average wage was less than $5 a day, and the country had the highest crime rate in Central America. Her parents, however, were part of the very small middle class. They lived a relatively quiet life, and always encouraged their daughters to be courteous and well-mannered. They were well aware that Honduras was a difficult place to grow up and were anxious that the girls should study hard in order to give themselves the best chance to be able to take advantage of every opportunity that came their way. The three girls were named Karina, Sofia and Maria Jose and as well as being charming, intelligent and educated, they all grew up to be extremely attractive young ladies. In 2010, when Maria Jose was 15 years old, her family encouraged her to participate in beauty pageants. She was very successful in these, and on Saturday the 31st of March 2012, she took part in Miss Teen Honduras, where she finished in second place. Modelling and commercial offers started to appear, and now 17-year-old Maria Jose spent a lot of time in the country's capital city, Tegucigalpa, However, at the same time her father was diagnosed with cancer and six months later, the family were devastated when he died. Her mother found it hard to cope without her husband, both emotionally and economically, and this also affected the behaviour of Maria Jose's sisters, especially her sister Sofia. In April 2014, now aged 18, Maria Jose entered and won the Miss Honduras beauty pageant. This was a very prestigious event and she was crowned Miss Honduras. It was a great achievement to win this competition and she was aware that it would undoubtedly bring many more commercial opportunities for her. But it was also a great honour as she would now represent her country in the Miss World beauty pageant that was to be held in London later that year. Maria Jose got on very well with both her sisters but she was particularly close to her sister Sofia. Sofia was a middle child and was five years older than Maria Jose. Even though she was only 23 years old, she had experienced much tragedy in her life. Following the death of her father in 2012, her boyfriend was murdered a year later in 2013. She had been living with him at the time. His death had left her emotionally unstable. However, Sofia had now become acquainted with someone else, a man named Plutarco Ruiz. They had met at a college as she was tutoring high school lessons to adults and he was one of her pupils. He was a few years older than her, but she thought he seemed nice, so they started to go out. Sophia's mother was not convinced that this man was someone who her daughter should be dating. She asked her about him, but she seemed vague with her answers. Sophia told her mother that Plutarco was a private person and didn't like to talk about himself. Sophia's mother, however, made her own inquiries and soon discovered that Senor Plutarco Ruiz wasn't the sort of person that she had hoped would ever be associated with any of her daughters. His brother and father had died and were allegedly involved with the Honduran drug cartels. Sophia's mother became very worried and pleaded with her daughter not to get involved with Senor Plutarco Ruiz. However, whenever Sophia tried to end the relationship, he persuaded her to stay. He knew that she had suffered tragedy and was emotionally distressed and he seemed to manage to be able to convince her that the best place she could be was with him. He was very possessive and was also known to be violent. Whenever he saw her talking to another man, he would become very jealous, regardless of the situation. He seemed to think that Sophia was his property. Sophia's mother 
continued to advise her to end the relationship. It was not only her mother who told Sophia to leave. Her friends also told her that she should find herself a nice, caring and hard-working boyfriend and really needed to distance herself from Plutarco. She had the perfect opportunity to do this when she discovered that he'd also been seeing a 17-year-old girl who had just given birth to his baby. Sophia was very hurt by this and left him. She started to go out and everyone thought that she had moved on. However, months later, and much to the disappointment of Sophia's mother, Plutarco persuaded her to resume their relationship. Whether she really wanted to be with him was unclear, as his constant harassment of her and his violent temper made it very difficult for Sophia to completely rid herself of him. In November 2014, Plutarco organised a birthday party for himself. He hired a restaurant named Aguagua on the outskirts of Santa Barbara. He wanted his party to be memorable and asked Sophia if she would bring her sister Maria Jose, who is by now a well-known figure in Honduras. Maria Jose, however, really did not want to go. Not only did she not like Plutarco, she also had a lot to do, as well as all her public appearances. She had to prepare for her trip to London to represent her country in the Miss World Beauty Contest, which was now only a few weeks away. She also had to take one final exam for her college studies. Accompanying her sister to the party was not high on her list of priorities. However, Sophia told her that she really needed her to be there and said that they didn't have to stay for very long. Maria Jose eventually agreed and this greatly pleased Plutarco as he had always been attracted to his girlfriend's sister and had always hoped that one day she may reciprocate his affections. On Friday the 13th of November, Plutarco sent his bodyguard to collect the sisters and drive them to his party at the restaurant. It was a warm evening and although Plutarco had made a big effort to arrange his birthday celebrations, neither Sophia or Maria Jose had plans to stay for too long, especially as Maria Jose had so much to do before she left for London. The next day, Saturday the 14th of November, the girl's mother, Senora Teresa Munoz, realised that her two youngest daughters had not returned home. She became very worried especially as she did not know exactly where the party had taken place. She tried to call them, and when she phoned Sophia, she heard her mobile phone ringing from her bedroom. In the rush to go to the party, she had left it behind. She searched for numbers and immediately called Plutarco to ask him if she knew where her daughters were. He told her that he did not, but would help her to find them. He said that he was pretty sure that the girls had left the party very early, and that they had left with some men who came from the town of Copan. By now, Senora Teresa Munoz was extremely concerned, and as time passed, there was no sign of her daughters. She contacted Maria Jose's college, hoping that she had gone there to take her final exam, but they said that they had not seen her. They advised her to contact the authorities, so Senora Munoz went to the police station and reported her two youngest daughters missing. At first, the police thought that the girls had probably been kidnapped, but there had not been any calls asking for a ransom, so this theory was quickly ruled out. The Honduran police did not have a very good record for solving crimes, but as Maria Jose was a celebrity in the country, her disappearance was headline news, and the police made the inquiry their top priority. The case was given to a high-level officer, named Leandro Osario, who immediately started a criminal investigation. He proceeded to speak to Plutarca Ruiz, who told the police that he had seen the sisters leave the party with some men from the town of Copan. Other party guests were interviewed, who confirmed that the young ladies had left with these men. It looked like the men from Copan were responsible for the disappearance of the sisters, Sofia and Maria Jose Alvarado. One witness, however, reported that at 10pm that night, they had heard a gunshot and had seen guests run away from the restaurant. But as shootings were not uncommon in Honduras, they did not give it much thought. Inspector Osorio thought that the men from Copan could be involved in trafficking young women, but now a witness had claimed to have heard a gunshot 
he decided to visit the party venue of the Aguagua restaurant. When he arrived, the owner named Ventura Diaz and his wife were not very cooperative. They seemed disinterested and even denied him access to their property. They told the police that they had been working in the kitchens on the night of the party, so did not really see very much. Inspector Osorio believed they were hiding something. The inspector arrested the couple and took them to the police station to be questioned further. Once they were safely in police custody, a forensic team started to examine the party venue. The examination uncovered several gunshot impacts on the floor. They also noticed that the floor had been thoroughly cleaned. The police proceeded to add a chemical forensic revealer to the floor, which showed that blood had recently been removed. They now had evidence that there had been a crime committed at the party venue. They continued to question Senor Ventura Diaz and his wife, and eventually they started to speak a bit more about the events that took place on the night of Friday the 13th of November 2014. By now the girls had been missing for a week, and demonstrations were held in the streets, protesting about the inquiry into finding them, and the failure of the police to properly investigate when young women went missing in the country. The police started to look into the background of Plutarca Ruiz. They discovered that he had a criminal record and was suspected of having links with local drug cartels. His name had also been mentioned in the involvement of other missing people. Next, the police arrested his bodyguard, a man named Senor Valentin Maldonado. He, however, said that he did not know what had happened to the sisters, other than they had left the party early, accompanied by some men from Copan. Eventually, however, after many hours of interrogation, he told the police what had happened that night. He said that everyone was in good spirits, but Plutarco had drunk too much, and he started to get angry with his girlfriend Sophia, as according to him, she was flirting with another man. He was also upset, as Maria Jose had not given him any attention. He became increasingly more aggressive, so Sophia tried to calm him down, but he was drunk, and he would not see reason. As he became increasingly more belligerent, Sophia decided to leave the party. She told him that she would not stay when he was acting like this. As she walked off, Plutarco took out his gun and shot her eight times in the back. She dropped to the floor as horrified guests looked on. Maria Jose ran to her sister's aid, but it was too late. Sophia was dead. Maria Jose screamed at Plutarco, but he just looked at her. He looked vacant, as if he had no idea as to what he was doing. He then pointed his gun at Miss Honduras and proceeded to shoot her 16 times. The remaining guests were stunned, and as they tried to leave the venue, Plutarco warned them not to report what they had just witnessed, or they too would face the same fate. Once everyone had left, Plutarco ordered Ventura Diaz to get some spades and told his wife to clean up the evidence. Ventura Diaz helped Valentin to load the bodies into Plutarco's truck. Plutarco and his bodyguard Valentin then went to a spot in the jungle, next to the Aguagua River, where Plutarco instructed Valentin to dig a shallow grave. Valentin Maldonado told the inspector exactly where the bodies were buried. Inspector Osorio and his police team immediately went to the site, and to his surprise, the bodies were visible. They had already been given up by the Aguagua River. The police then went to Plutarco's house and asked him to accompany them to the station. He continued to deny that he had any knowledge as to what had happened to his girlfriend and her sister. He was not aware that the police had a statement made by his bodyguard and no idea of the media circus that was unfolding. When the media learned that the bodies had been located, press and TV crews soon descended on the remote jungle spot. The shooting was headline news, and within hours of Valentin Maldonado's confession, the whole country learned that Miss Honduras, Maria Jose Alvarado, and her sister Sofia had been murdered. As Plutarco was already in police custody, they merely told him that they needed him to identify some possible suspects from Copan. Of course, he falsely identified some of them. They then got a warrant to search his home, and there they found the clothes he had worn at the party, and the gun he had used to kill the victims. 
They also found evidence that the bodies had been transported in his truck. Plutarco, however, continued to deny his involvement in the crime and blamed Ventura Diaz and his wife. He said that they were responsible for the murders of the sisters. The police listened to his story before presenting him with all the evidence they had, statements from witnesses, forensic evidence and a file of his previous criminal activities. Realising that now all the evidence against him was overwhelming, he confessed to the murders. He was taken from the police cell to prison, but Plutarco Ruiz had already worked out a plan. Knowing the media would be waiting outside, he smiled all the time. He was putting on a show, as he wanted to be declared insane. This would mean a lighter sentence, and that he would be put into a secure mental institution instead of prison. He underwent a psychological assessment, the results of which confirmed that Plutarco Ruiz was not in fact insane and that he was able to stand trial. The trial of Plutarco Ruiz began in the country's capital city, Tegucigalpa, in April 2017. Sofia and Maria Jose's sister Karina was hoping that Plutarco would be given the maximum time in prison. She gave evidence of the physical and psychological abuse that he had inflicted on Sophia and described a toxic relationship that her sister had found very difficult to free herself from. Many witnesses were called and when the trial ended, Plutarco Ruiz was found guilty and sentenced to 45 years in prison. The other people involved, including his bodyguard and the owner of the restaurant, were sentenced to four years for accessory to murder Unfortunately, tragic events such as this were not uncommon in Honduras in 2014. According to a UN report, the country had the highest murder rate in the world for any country not at war, with an estimated 90 to 95 killings per 100,000 people. The Miss World pageant of 2014 went ahead in London. There was a special remembrance service held that was attended by all the contestants. The competition was won by a young lady representing South Africa. It was announced that members of the Miss World Board would visit Honduras, where a school would be built in Santa Barbara to be named in honour of the sisters, Sofia and Maria Jose. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have. And I hope to see you all again in the next brief Case.